I would like to know, uh, you know, you've known uh, Senator Obama for a long time now and you're are advising him on, on energy issues. I wonder if, if what's been your sense of his evolution on those issues, how seriously he takes them, his, his, his positions on them. I mean, it, 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 he, he's got good, you know, he's got very good proposals, obviously, and the, and the, and the plan is strong. Is he new to the to the enthusiasm for this stuff, or has it been a... a you know, the wonderful thing about Barack Obama is that he understands the energy issues. He cares about it. And this is not simply smart advisors giving him candidate ideas. This is a presidential candidate, and I hope and believe our next president, who knows, cares about, and deeply understands clean energy issues. A little bit of history. When Barack Obama was a state senator in Illinois, he was a sponsor of the Renewable Portfolio Standard legislation. As a senator, he's been a strong supporter of the Renewable Energy Standard, the production tax credit. This is someone who knows and cares about these issues and has done that for a long time. Uh, not somebody who all of a sudden has discovered on the campaign trail something that might be viewed as politically popular. We're dealing with an extraordinary person, an attorney who's running for president, and someone who knows, cares about, and is passionately committed to clean energy in a very different way. He understands the connection between the economy, the environment, energy, and national energy security, how those have converged, and that we need policies that make us less reliant on oil from the Middle East, countries that don't like us very much, where we can create five million new green jobs here in the United States and put people back to work with jobs of the future as opposed to jobs of the past, and do it in a way that helps clean up our environment and solve our global warming problems and keep money in our country. I mean, that convergence has come together, and that's something that Barack Obama knows, understands, cares about, and as our next president, that vision will drive his policies and his administration. I mean, speak, speaking of history, uh, I think the conventional wisdom in the environmental community at this point is that Obama came out of Illinois, where coal is very uh, a strong force, and that he was friendly to coal as an Illinois politician, as an Illinois senator, but that he's been backing away a little bit on the campaign trail. Do you think that's a fair assessment of the of the, of the trajectory? or Not really, but let me frame it a little bit differently. Uh, Illinois is a state with a lot of coal. Illinois is a state that has more nuclear power plants than any state in the country. Illinois also has now the second largest amount of wind power development of any state in the country, 6,500 megawatts of wind power. So it's a very interesting state in that way. And it also has enormous energy efficiency opportunities. Um, as a senator from Illinois, Barack Obama represents the people, the businesses, the industries, and the interests of Illinois. And if you're a senator from Illinois, as Dick Durbin, or as Barack Obama, you're going to be looking at the interests and listening hard to the interests of the whole community because they're a part of the state and they're an important part of the state. Uh, Barack Obama is now running for president, and his representation is broader, You're representing all 50 states. Uh, different states have interest in natural gas, and different states have more interest in renewable energy. And if you're going to be president of the country, you're president of the entire country, uh, not a state. I think that's a better way of looking at it. Another piece of looking at it is Barack Obama cares about coal miners, and he cares about using coal resources only doing it in a way that is clean. So if you look at what he's done and what he says he will do, when it comes to the Clean Air Act, he's been a very strong supporter of reducing pollution very significantly from coal plants. His climate change proposal would put a cap of 80% on CO2 pollution. And there's no way that that doesn't have a serious impact upon the coal industry and the coal plants in our country. On the other hand, he's also said, let's really get to the bottom and find out if clean coal technology can work. He said, let's go forward with four, five, six carbon capture and sequestration plants. We ought to invest in advanced technology and see if we can burn coal and use a resource that we have abundantly in the United States with people who are employed in that industry, but do it in a way that's clean and help solve our global warming problems. 
And I think that's a thoughtful position that's really thought through uh, by what I hope will be our next president. As you know, I know you've done some advising to Obama, Senator Obama and the campaign. What is your advice, you know, in terms of approaching this issue in the election and then in the just very beginning days of, of, of his presidency if he wins? What's fascinating is if you look back over the last several elections, energy issues have been a second tier issue. This is the first presidential election in which energy issues are a first tier issue that both candidates, Senator Obama and Senator McCain, are spending a lot of time on because the American public cares and cares a lot about it. Uh, I think whichever candidate's elected, we, whether Obama, as I hope, or Senator McCain, uh, that next president will spend a lot of time early in his administration focusing on energy opportunity, energy solutions for our country, and hopefully the clean energy opportunities. What do you think will be the biggest challenges for the next administration in, in moving forward on these, these issues? Uh, the, the biggest challenge for the next administration is that eight years of George Bush has left our economy in a mess. Um, the next president faces an enormous challenge where the American economic system, our balance of payments, uh, is way out of whack. Uh, what began with a surplus is now a massive deficit. Uh, we're looking at what most people would call verging on a recession. Uh, the unemployment is relatively high. The economy is in trouble. Everybody knows it. And the biggest challenge for the next president coming in is what to do about the very challenged American economy. The interesting part of it from a clean energy perspective is that can be one of the solutions for our economy. Let's look at what are the jobs of the future, the green jobs that we have in the United States developing and using new clean technologies that can not only solve our problems, but can be transferred to countries like China and India and other developing nations to help reduce climate change problems in those countries. I mean, this is a real opportunity for us to develop the export technology that helps solve the world's the global climate problems. Um, we were up to about 59 votes on some of the renewable tech, uh, renewable energy votes in the Senate this year, and uh, you know, there's there's thought that we're gonna that Democrats will gain some seats in the Senate, but I don't know that anybody thinks that Democrats will get above that 60 mark. So there's still going to be, Senate Republicans are still, if they have unity, going to be able to threaten filibuster and, and filibuster. Do you think o Obama will be able to, can a president overcome that if, if Senate Republicans are determined to remain unified against this stuff? Well, let's look at a fundamental difference between Senator Obama and Senator McCain. Uh, the League of Conservation Voters scored 15 environmental votes yeah. in 2007. Republicans for Environmental Progress, the Republican group, scored 14 votes. John McCain missed every single one of those votes. So we have Barack Obama not only speaking up for clean energy and the environment, but showing up, and John McCain isn't. Uh, and Barack Obama, we have somebody who's been a leader on renewable energy standards, who supported the production tax credit, wind power and other clean technologies. John McCain has opposed them. President Bush has not been supportive. Leadership in the White House can help move Congress. So it's not just a matter of how many votes there are in the Senate um, among Democrats and Republicans. And today's prognosis is the Democrats will gain some votes. It's leadership rather than obstacles from the White House. And I think post-election, we're going to see more of a bipartisan consensus in Congress to really try to move an energy policy that makes sense forward, and that's got to include production tax credits for wind power and other renewables, and it's got to probably include an RPS at the same time. We have the right leadership coming from the President, uh, and we have a little bit of a change in votes over in the Senate. Uh, this legislation can move very early in the next administration. Great. Thanks very much.